Great, and we're live. So welcome everybody to this remote interview. My name is Lisette and I'm interviewing people and companies doing great things remotely. And today on the line, en route from Virginia, on the way to DC, and then eventually to end up in Philly, I have Corey Grusden. So Corey, welcome from the train. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> and uh, let's start with, <laughs> what does your virtual office look like? <laughs> what do you need to get your work done? Uh, currently, uh, it looks like a train. Um, basically, anywhere that uh, you know, I can sit down, preferably in a quiet space. Uh, you know, I don't have an office, so I don't have an uh, office space anywhere. Um, so I do have my, my cell phone, my laptop, and uh, you know, one of these little MiFi things from AT&T that uh, you know, if I get stuck somewhere that doesn't have Wi-Fi, at least I know I can log in and do emails or write code, uh, you know, which is our main business. Uh, so okay. it doesn't eat up too much bandwidth. And is that what you're using to connect now? Actually, it is. Awesome. <laughs> uh, it is quite quick, which is good. Yeah, the connection is very decent for being on a train. I have spent a lot of time on trains, and the Wi-Fi is never good, I'll tell yeah. you that. So... Kudos for having your own mobile router. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Awesome. So you're the CTO of a company called SoFetch.io. SoFetch.io. Tell us a little bit about what SoFetch does, and we're going to get into then your stand-up bot, which is how I learned about you. So let's let's talk about your company first and what you guys do, because I I see on the internet it says uh, you're a software internet excuse me, a software entrepreneur who knows how to build, build ideas that make money. So <laughs> what's that all about? Yes, not limited to uh, building ideas that just make money. But uh, yes, yeah, so <laughs> basically been programming for a very long time, probably 20 something years, 23 years. Uh, and then over the past eight, nine years, uh, just been working remotely uh, simply because it's, you know, it's technology. There's absolutely no reason to be in an office. Um, you know, I can be somewhere else and helping a company or person. There's some organization, uh, you know, 10 miles away or a thousand miles away, uh, which has been very nice. And just kind of sticking to that. Uh, so, so Fetch is built around, you know, that principle of we don't, we don't go on site at all. Uh, we do everything remotely. We're 100% remote based in the United States. Uh, and, the beautiful thing about that is, you know, traditional consulting companies, you, you're constantly doing service-based work. So you have to find a customer, figure out what it is they need, get that, that need done. Um, so you have to build all these processes that make you more efficient this way. You know, you're not losing money, right? And you're delivering a product that the customer sees a lot of value in for that money. Well, working remotely, those same processes you have to take to the next level and because you're all remote uh, so the communication and the collaboration you know you have all this space between you physically you know, physical space so your processes have to be even more efficient even more clear and uh, you know that's what so fetch is you know we we pride ourselves on knowing that we can get pretty much anything done when we say we're gonna have it done so why did you, what attracted you to remote working to begin with? What was your first step into that world? Uh, the first step would have, was, you know, I wanted to, you know, I got into doing triathlons. Uh, and that takes a lot of time out of the week or out of the day, really. Uh, you know, six days a week to, to be training. Um, and I remember the, the job that, the last job that I had, you know, I would, I would wake up, I would get to the office at 7.30 a.m., I would be in there before anybody else. As a developer, that's quite early. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and then, you know, I would do three, four hours worth of work, clock out for two hours, which, you know, I've, I got a massive amount of work done in the morning uh, because I knew I would clock out for at least two hours to go ride a bike for, you know, whatever, 50 miles, 40 miles, or go to the pool for an hour and a half and swim, which was right across the street from the office, by the way. Lucky. Um, yeah. Very convenient. And then I would come back and I would finish out my day. Well, that didn't work in that traditional business model. They're like, that doesn't make sense. You know, you have an hour for lunch. And, you know, I came over the top and said, well, that doesn't make sense because I just, you know, I'm getting things done. Uh, and at that moment in time, I was like, you know what? 
I'm just going to do this myself. So I left that position literally that day after that, that conversation in an office, uh, fired myself. Um, and immediately, you know, at the time Craigslist was around, uh, you know, just started becoming a thing, uh, and started looking for positions. I was like, what do I, what am I good at? Oh, PHP. Okay. Well, let me go find PHP jobs. Uh, and it just, it was just really nice because then I could build my own schedule and I was able to go train and, you know, eventually I was like, Oh, I need to go to this race. And then now I don't need to tell anybody. I just go and unbeknownst to the person paying me, they didn't know that I was, you know, down in Miami for six hours or, you know, for three days doing a race because I got everything done. Um, so I just, you know, stuck with that all the way through to, to today. So was it, so most people take a lot of time to deliberate whether or not they should quit their jobs or not. Was it hard? I can, I should, and I should, I should preface as a developer, you have a lot of options. So that's a, that's a very lucky, that's a very good, not lucky. That's a very good skill to have. If you're going to go out on your own, there are other skills that may not have it so easy, but what was it hard to find extra work? Yes. Uh, I think, uh, you know, at the time it, it's, it was, it's actually probably harder now than it was then to find work. Uh, simply because there's so much noise now and so many more tools and so many more things to go find remote work. Um, you know, I, I remember being able to sit down and literally email people on Craigslist and an hour or two after the initial email, they would get back to me and I'd be on the phone, uh, you know, talking about their project. Um, now, you know, there's a lot of companies doing remote work. Uh, you know, corporations are starting to do, to do more uh, remote type work. Um, so that's kind of where we want to, you know, we're already in a position to say, hey, we're already used to being remote. You can and add us to your team or your organization very quickly, you know, almost next day, really. Uh, and we're able to hit the ground running and start building the software, uh, you know, like I said, now there's other services out there that, you know, there's, there's hired, there's, um, flex hired. job, I think this is one of them. Yeah. Freelancer guru. There's a whole, yeah, there's a lot. You're right. Yeah. Sorry, you just cut out there. Could you repeat what you just said? So it's it's a developer or not you know, remote. Okay. So the link wasn't or the connection wasn't that great, but maybe third time's a charm. Try it again. It looks like it's good now. Let's do it. Uh, okay. Yeah. So people ask me, hey, you know, what about uh, quitting my job and working remotely? And I usually, you know, I, I I'm not a naysayer, but it is now that I'm I've been operating. On on this side of the table for quite some time, I tell them, be very careful. I would probably not get rid of your day job right now because uh, it is a, it's night and day. Um, you really need to be so like disciplined. Um, so taking on a side project is a good start because if you can't deliver on a side project, chances are you're probably not going to deliver on a full-time project either because um, there, there is a learning curve as, as good as you might be at what you do whatever it is, coding or otherwise, uh, you really need to, to make sure it's something you want to be doing. And a lot of people just, they, they, they get this contract and it's like, oh, I can make X amount of dollars from working from home. <sighs> but you know, what happens when that contract's up? <laughs> You're not used to selling yourself. Right, right. And the hustling is where a lot of people, they do, that, uh, the hustling is a lot harder than people uh, think. Uh, so that's really good advice. So take on a side project to get started is the takeaway from that, which is really good. And you're right. You do have to be very disciplined as a remote worker because as you mentioned before, the results are what matters. It's not how much time you took to actually get something done. It's what did you deliver to the client and are they happy with that? So I can imagine that that's hard. So how are you finding all of your work now? Uh, so now, you know, it's still referrals based off of the work that we do. That's been, 
you know, working out now simply because we've been around long enough and had enough uh, success with all, most of our projects uh, that we're starting to get work that way. So it does take a while, like any other business. Um, you know, we've we've got a marketing plan. You know, we've got out we've got outbound work going on, which is, you know, we're we're lucky since you know we're a, a large or a big company, right? Uh, compared to most people that are working from home, which is going to be your solopreneurs, uh, you know, they have one person themselves or it's them and a friend or something. Uh, I just got off the phone with a friend literally 30 minutes prior to uh, talking with you about this very problem. Uh, you know, I'm like, you have to have a marketing plan. You have to have a plan and then execute on that plan or else because you're working for yourself remotely, you don't know the boundaries, right? Uh, you, you're so consumed with getting this project done because you're working from home. The company or organization that's paying you does not see you working. So having to deliver something often is in your head. Uh, right. And you're more worried about that than, you know, you have to balance it. You have to be looking for new work. You have to have something telling you that today, at the very least, this one little thing I have to do, whether it's, you know, add one person on LinkedIn that you don't know that's in your industry, start having a conversation with them. Uh, you know, he doesn't, he, he has been doing that, but uh, writing a blog post, um, you know, attending a meetup, you don't do these things until it's too late as if you don't already know that. Right. Uh, and by going to an office, if you're like, say, working in full-time position, you don't think about these things and you don't have to do them. That's why you don't think about them. But the second you, you cross that line to re working remotely, it's a whole new ball game. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I think people think of, they have this image of pajamas and uh, slippers and a luxurious uh, working from home office. Um, and they don't really realize the marketing and the hustle that goes into making that happen and actually being productive on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I read that you have an employee leasing program. I found that very interesting. What is that? Uh, you know, it's this, it's sort of one of those things where we have our projects, uh, you know, everybody is working on a project, uh, you know, it's, we, we get a, a new customer in and they're like, Hey, we have our own process to get our software built. We don't want to use SoFetch's process, uh, because, you know, there's a learning curve, So you're breaking up and I'm looking for my so, well, you know, so one second. You're breaking up. There we go. Try it again. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I like that card. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. See? <laughs> You've had, this obviously has happened a couple of times. <laughs> I have a whole deck. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I need a set of those. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's not too far off. Our employee leasing program is not too far from, uh, you know, just you know, staff augmentation. We like to think of it as, uh, you know, in separation of process or processes. You know, we have our software development process that does, doesn't change. So all of everybody that I work with, that's what we follow temporarily someone will go work for another, you know, work for one of our customers using their process outside of everything that we have, which means, uh, you know, during conversations, it's, we know we're going to be successful when we build your project because this is what has worked time and time again. Right. If we lease out somebody at one, from our team, they are not necessarily bringing our process into your organization. They're going to be using whatever process you have. And at that point, uh, you know, the responsibilities of, of uh, getting things done as far as, you know, are they going to, are you going to hit your deadlines? I can't tell you that uh, because we're just not a part of it. Um, right. So, so there's no guarantee if you do that. There's you, you basically give the employee, like here's a guarantee that this is a great employee, but it's, there's mm -hmm. no guarantee that if they use your system, you're going to hit it. Whereas if you use your system, you can Correct yet because interesting we, because we're we're very efficient at what we do and this is you know 
every single day we work on our process to improve it. So we know exactly where we're at while building software. Uh, once someone goes into your organization, they will be the best, you know, you, they're, they're very good at what they do. Um, but they're again, the different management, you know, I, we, we can't guarantee anything other than yes, whatever it is you want or whatever you say you need done, uh, that will get done, you know, uh, by our developers, uh, depending on how your organization scopes the project, manages the project, can't guarantee that. Right. That's, now, that's, oops, sorry. So I'll interrupt again and say, and uh, you guys have built something, which is how you and I got connected. You've built the stand-up bot, which runs stand-up meetings in Slack. Is that correct? Correct. Why did you guys build this? It's a great idea. Totally love it. Why, why were you building this? <laughs> so, <laughs> and so tell us about what it does for people who don't know what a stand-up meeting is, perhaps, or... Yeah, why, how sure. it work? <laughs> so stand-up meetings have been around for quite some time. They are a analog, or they have been an analog process when everybody is under the same roof. Uh, and what they do is, this, the stand-up meeting is very simple. Uh, no one likes being in very long meetings, so you have to be standing up, for starters, in this. So you're still breaking up a bit. So we'll wait just a second till the train comes to the next stop. So this is what it's like to work remotely. We have these issues. So we'll just wait for the train to get to the next stop. Looks like it's getting close. Are you there now? Usually in a circle. Somebody usually has something in their hand to say like, oh, I'm, it's my turn right now. I am, uh, I still see the. Yeah, you're back okay, now. We go. <laughs> all right, I'll try to be quick. That's all right. <laughs> uh, so, so stand up meetings, uh, you know, somebody's holding something to say, hey, it's my turn. There's three simple questions that need to be answered by you every morning at the same time or, you know, uh, same time for the entire group. What did you accomplish since the last meeting at the same time yesterday? What are you going to accomplish from today's meeting right now to tomorrow's meeting at probably 10 a.m. in the morning? And third question is, what is blocking you? Uh, what this does is it allows everybody to say, like scope their day and stay on task. So it's like, here, these are the two things that I'm gonna get done today. Uh, you know, and, or sorry, let me back up. Here's the things that I got done yesterday. So it's helping you see, are you estimating correctly? Are all the things from yesterday you said you were gonna get done, did you get them done? Okay, why? Why did you not get them done? Or why did, or, or like, congratulations, you got them all done, you'll feel good. Next question is, what are you gonna accomplish and for the next day or today? That sets you up for focusing just on those items, right? So it keeps your attention. Uh, the blocking question, if I have to, if I'm waiting on a contract or if I'm waiting on something, at least I can voice it, and that person or somebody in the group can help me unblock myself. Uh, you know, now, since we've been doing that online, excuse me, excuse me on, uh, in Slack, because we all were work remotely, we were taking that, and I was manually typing that, uh, those questions to everybody in the room, and it was taking me, I don't know how long, it can't happen. So we we built a, a plug-in for Slack. I was like, please just automate this. because This is not, I don't need to be doing this for two or three hours on my own time every morning. I got stuff to do. So we built an open source version of it at first. I didn't think anything of it. We just put it out on GitHub and we started using it and making small improvements, but not many. We spent the time, since we're all software developers, I was like, just make it easy for other people to install because the problem with open source software is usually no documentation, or it's really difficult to install. So we focused on doing that at the very least. Uh, a couple months went by, and somebody looked at the GitHub account, and it's, you know, we've got all these people starring and forking and, you know, downloading this thing, so it's obviously something that's useful. Uh, so awesome. we made the decision to turn that into a, yeah, so we turned that into a paid product. And, you know, now, I don't know, I get constant pings from uh, Tim, who runs that, that product, uh, Tim Chilcutt, he, uh, 
you know, he sends me feedback from people that love using this, you know, just this very, uh, this tool that's integrated into everybody's daily life now. Um, you know, so many CTOs are like, hey, this thing has turned my project around. Hey, this thing, uh, this tool has, keeps everybody on, uh, you know, on task and on focus. Uh, so it's really nice to see those almost on a daily basis. Um, you know, we have big names, you know, like Microsoft, IBM, Hewlett Packard, you know, all these companies, Accenture, they're using it now to success. So, uh, you know, that's part of our process, right? And that's what helps is just knowing how to communicate when you work remotely. So the, the question that comes to mind immediately is, what about the human part of the stand-up meeting where you're all hanging out? What about, you, can't, you lose that when you have the Slack bot. So what about that aspect of it all? So we, how we handle that is we do have a, a general chat room where everybody can at least chat. Uh, you know, it, it, it is nice to be able to, in, or sorry, be in the same room as everybody, obviously. Uh, but it's when working remotely, just having stand up bot be something every day that you have to interact with other people, uh, even if it's text based, it still helps when working remotely. It gives you that uh, feeling of not being so lonely or by yourself. Because you know, at every morning at this time, you're going to be talking to at least this many people, right? Right. So, if, if anything, this, the, the byproduct of this tool is, hey, there's a designated time that when you work remotely, we can all at least know that somebody else is on the other side of that screen listening to me or this, you know, vice versa. Right. So it actually adds a humanness factor in some ways just because it's so constant. I mean, it forms this feedback loop Correct. that is ever, that is never ending in some ways until the weekend. And it's, it's extremely nice. <laughs> sometimes it runs. <laughs> I know there's some teams that use it on the weekends so like their clock is different uh, you know over on our weekends are, are their Mondays right right uh, depending on where you are in the world indeed <laughs> indeed so I want to I want to uh, ask a couple more questions but one is what is it that you guys struggle with on your team what's something that's challenging for you uh, you know it's you know, there are a lot of challenges. I mean, the, the number one challenge I would say is, is the, the doing the marketing, uh, you know, focusing on that simply because when you work remotely, you can, you can kind of put your head down and ignore the entire world. And it's very easy to do that. Extremely easy to do that. So you, you have to have a plan. You have to follow that plan, uh, you know, and that plan being, you know, an example would be the marketing plan that we have. It's like these things have to get done every single day, sometimes in the morning before everything starts. You know, I'll wake up extremely early and go, you know, go run. And then, you know, I still have plenty of time to write a blog post or reach out or do whatever it is on that plan. Or else when the day starts, you're just going to be focused right here and you know, no one's going to be tapping on your shoulder like they would in an office saying, hey, did you get this done yet? Right. I really like the idea that when you say, because a lot of people say, oh, introverts should never become remote workers because they're just not going to reach out enough. So I really like that you didn't focus on whether somebody was introvert or extrovert, but rather regardless of whether you want to reach out or not, have a plan for reaching out and then execute on that plan regardless of personality type. Because I think you're right about that. Correct. It's the, you know, at the end of the day, it is a unit of work. So you don't have to look at that unit of work as it's going to give me social anxiety. It's, it's, or this one thing, just make sure that happens and it gets done. Right. Have totally no makes sense. <laughs> totally it. makes sense. Oops, sorry. We're getting a little bit of overlap from, uh, from train. Train fund this. But anyway, this is, a, this is actually, I love this um, interview in particular because it's showing what's possible. Like the conversation is choppy, but it's not bad. It's for sure we could, we could discuss details of things. We just have to wait out the pauses. So I think this is a great example of how it can work. Yeah. <laughs> so in a great, in there a great are definitely way. some spots for the internet. 
Indeed, and we missed that last thing you said, so try one more time. There are definitely some spots that... Uh, that you don't get service. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Indeed. It's not 100%, but you are on yeah. the go. So there's a trade-off everywhere, right? That's right. <laughs> so then the last question is, um, what is the best way to get in touch with you and to find more information? I assumed that you'd want people to go to sofetch.io. Um, but what are some of the better ways in order to learn more? You know, it's... And we'll have to have him repeat it because he's breaking up. And in fact, at the moment, he's frozen. And I have a frozen card as well. I just have to find it. Here we go. Use a different card to show that you're frozen. All right, well, we'll see if Corey Grusden, the CTO of SoFetch.io, is coming back. He's en route from Virginia uh, to D.C. Ah, here we go. I think you're back. Email or phone call. All right, the connection's been cut. That is what happens. It's happened on a couple of interviews so far. This is the reality of remote working. That was Corey Grusden, CTO of SoFetch.io. He created a stand-up bot that runs remote meetings, remote stand-up meetings in Slack. So definitely go check that out. And until next time, everybody, be powerful. <laughs>